Psalms 73. It says, uh, For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They have a lot of, uh, you know, they build up their family name, their family uh, uh, treasure, their economics, so that uh, you don't, you can't mess around with the rich people. You know? uh, <clears throat> For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They want to get away. They want to get away with all the crime that they committed. They fight for that. All their life, they fight to bury their crime and to come out ahead on top. And they oppress the poor. They want to keep the poor under. That's their dog eat dog. And their families, they gather in families together, you know, and they celebrate their family name and the wickedness they've done and what they've earned disgustingly in this world to get their position. And if you're born into that kind of a family and you don't agree with it, then you're cast out. And you're cast out into the world. And you find out what the world is all about. Yeah, therefore, they set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. They do. Yeah, they they hold God in contempt. They don't think they'll ever have to account for what they've done. In verse eleven, it says, "And how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? The fool has said in their heart." That there is no God. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world and they increase in riches. You want to be with them? You go ahead. You lose your soul. Probably, no doubt. So uh, Asaph was saying, I've cleansed my heart in vain. I wash my hands in innocency. You know? All day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. You know, like Moses, who didn't want to be uh, accounted with the wicked people in Egypt, he had to suffer for the thing, for the for his morality, for his integrity, for his love of goodness. God rewarded him, but you don't see much of that today, do you? You don't see people leaving their families for the truth. You don't see people. Seeking out a, a, a way that God has called them, like God called Abraham, away from his home, away from his family, that, so that God could make a great nation out of him. You don't see that much, do you? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> if I say I will speak thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. He would offend his own relatives if he spoke the truth, you know. And he said when he thought to know about it, it was just too painful for him. You know, all that hatred coming from the world and from your own relatives. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely thou hast set them in the slipperiest places, thou castest them down into destruction. That's where you're headed. How are they brought to desolation in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. They have no fear of God now, but they will. As a dream when one, one awaketh, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou will despise their image. Disgusting. So foolish was I and ignorant and as a beast before thee, you know, just reacting on a, a human level. Well, there's a, they're all rejoicing, you know, and you're weeping and mourning. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by my right hand. 
Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. And wh whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. Get away from the corruption. Get away from these wicked people. These doggy dog people. You know, when Jesus Christ was on the earth, let's read that psalm if I can find it. Yeah, but, G but Jesus says, I, I looked for some to. Oh, here it is, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes fail while I wait for God. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, um, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, they sit in the gate and, uh, let's see. Verse 20 in Psalm 69, it says, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, and there was none. Nobody, nobody is following after God and for comforters, but I found none. This is what King David wrote. But this is also prophetic of Jesus Christ. Remember what, remember, remember in, in Isaiah 53, what is written of Jesus Christ and the sufferings that he had to go through? Because he wasn't going to play the doggy dog game. He only knew love, kindness, and humbleness between people. That's all he desired. He looked for comforters, but found none. Well, some people say, well, Peter tried to comfort him. Told him, be kind to yourself, Lord. Yeah, tried to kick him out of God's work. That wasn't a comforter. Comforter who was one who understood, who was walking in the same path. And that could comfort him. That's why God sent the angels to comfort him. Because no man on, in this whole earth comforted him. And that's the ones I look for. The ones who are last. Whom Jesus says will be first. And those many that are first are going to be last. So we suffer, you know. We suffer like Jesus Christ did. Now you might not hear about the suffering of Jesus Christ. Except for his crucifixion. When he suffered at the hands of Pilate and the Romans. At the, at the request of the Jews. But look at, look at Psalm, uh, Isaiah 53. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. Real kindness and God, love of God and godliness, that's rare. We live in a dry country. Dry, void of real love and love of God and purity and kindness. He hath no form or comeliness, and, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He, didn't, he wasn't a great popularity man, because people liked the way he looked. He is despised and rejected of man. A man of sorrows, you understand that? And acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Yet he'd have fallen because of the miracles he did. Jesus even said to him, Well, yeah, yeah, you follow me because you ate of the bread and were satisfied. Work not for the meat that perishes, but work for the, the food that lasts for eternal life, whom the Son of Man will give you. People don't understand, and they're not going to be successful in their life. I don't care how much rejoicing they do. They're coming to an end. The whole world is coming to an end. As it is. 
But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yeah. They deserved it, but he got it. Man pure from God. He was oppressed and afflicted. He opened out his mouth. So we don't hear about that. We don't hear about when Jesus Christ was with his disciples. How he was afflicted and how he, how he was despised by people for the most part. And none of them, none of them knew him. Nobody knew him. His disciples didn't know him. That's why he went up to a mountain alone to pray. What he was suffering, he suffered alone in this world. And when I look around for the disciples of Jesus Christ, I don't find them. Some come forth and, and say, oh yeah, we're disciples of Jesus Christ. And you find out they're ridiculous, man. They're immature. Playing games is what they do. They're kids. You know, it's, uh, Jesus Christ had his heart broken. You people of mankind broke his heart. You're running around all the time, trying to get ahead in the world, trying to acquire money. That's why Jesus said, what? Look at the birds. They don't sow seed. You don't have time for God. All you have time is to make money. And it's going to come down on your head for the way you lived your life. You know? There's nobody. There's nobody. And I've been suffering since I was 19 years old like this. Ever since God's Spirit came to me. And the reason it came to me is because God knew that I needed His love, man. Because I didn't see any love in this world. And that's why He gave His love to me when at that age, so young. And I thought people were going to rejoice when they heard about the kingdom of God and the wonderful things that God has prepared for those that love Him and the wonderful King that Jesus Christ is going to be. Psalm 72, give the King thy judgments and the King's Son, thy righteousness unto the King's Son. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, the poor in spirit. And shall break in pieces the lying, greedy, fat oppressors. I don't have time to read the whole thing because I have to end this at 15 minutes. But the wonderful things that God has prepared for them that love Him are un unspeakable, so wonderful. And yet people don't want to know. They don't know, even when you tell them. Even when they read the Bible, they still don't know because they don't have the Spirit of God.